Okay. All right. All right. Thank you guys for joining me. So I want to welcome you to Mount Movers Prayer. Where would I say? Where we pray until mountains are moved. So again, I'm Apostle Dr. Jewel Williams. I'm one of the lead pastors of Abundant Life Worship Center here in Chicago. We're located at 7701 South Exchange and our Monday, I mean our Monday, our Sunday services meet at 930. So as you know, for some of you who have been a part of Mountain Movers Prayer, knew that we normally met every Thursday at 1030. Um, but God wanted to do something new. So that's why we moved to this new platform. And so I wanted to tell you the reasons why. First of all, I believe one of the reasons is because God is saying he's looking for individuals that are willing to make an investment into what he wants to do. So what do I mean? Um, you had to make a decision. You were going, you, you had to make a decision. You were going to show up while it may have not cost you anything financially. It still is costing your time and it's costing you being willing to be accountable in this time. And so say, he said, these are the ones that he's looking for in these seasons, not just the ones that's looking for a quick fix, but those that are willing to do the work. Right. The second reason is because God wants to provide those who want prayer, a more personal platform to be able either to ask questions or to receive prayer. And this way, th the way that it'll work is I'm going to give the lessons like I normally do. If you've got questions, you put them in the chat like you would when we did on Facebook. And I will answer the questions as I go along. And then at the end, I'm going to give that general prayer. At that point, when I do that general prayer, if that's enough for you, you can, you're can you free to leave. After the general prayer, we're going to cut off the recording. And then we're going to do breakout rooms. I have two other intercessors that are going to be praying for whatever your needs are. It's Pastor Orr and one of our other members, uh, Sister Brenda Harris. And so we're going to be in three rooms. We're going to break you out in these three rooms and we're going to pray. So don't get worried. If it looked like we run out of time, if we got to go back and reassign you, we going to make sure everybody that wanted prayer gets prayer. That's part of the reason why this is not every Thursday, because <laughs> God is calling us to something different. And so, you know, God is saying this way, you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, being able to give your requests. You don't have to worry about, um, you know, anybody judging your need or attacking or any attacks of the enemy um, coming in in stealth mode, um, trying to monitor what's going on, because if it ain't right, we kicking it out. Amen. So for those that will be listening to the replay on any of my podcast platforms, I hope this lesson and prayer blesses you. So I want to share today, as you can see on the screen, I'm sharing from the book I wrote called The Hymn Project. And I have a challenge for those that are willing to accept it. Sound almost like, what is that? Um, the, 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 I forget the little show they used to have, the I Spy. I, I have a challenge for you. Um, so this one is actually... This is, was the first series I did when I started Mount Movers. I started the series, The Hymn Project, and eventually I put it in the book. And I've taught from it from a couple of times, but even today as I was preparing for it, it's just going to hit in an even a different way. Amen? So the challenge that I want to give to you is if you have the book or if you don't have the book, it's not very expensive, I want you to get it. And I want you to do a 90-day, find a prayer partner, and you and this prayer partner go through the book together. You guys use it as a guide. It's only a guide. Pray through some things. Read through some things. Go through it together for the next 90 days. And come in with some expectancy for both you and your prayer partner to see some things answered. And the reason why I gave you 90 days is because the next time that we will meet again, the next time that the next mountain movie is going to be on June 6th. So, um, like I said, the book isn't that big. But if you can commit to the 90 days, I would appreciate that. I think you'll get something out of it on the screen. If you are are, are um, actually not just via your phone, there's a QR code that you can actually um, get and get that information. If not, it's right on Amazon. Um, so even if somebody's not watching the PowerPoint. All right. Now that that's done, let me share with you what the Lord said about this hymn project. I'm going to the scripture in Luke 8, 41 through 56. And this is what it said. Then a man named Jairus, a leader of the local synagogues, came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him to come home with him. His only daughter, who was about 12 years old, was dying. 
As Jesus went with him, he was surrounded by the crowds. A woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding and she could find no cure. Coming up behind Jesus, she touched the fringe of his robe. Immediately the bleeding stopped. Who touched me? Jesus asked. Everyone denied it and Peter said, Master, this whole crowd is pressing up against you. But Jesus said, "Uh uh-uh, someone deliberately touched me for I felt healing power go out from me. When the woman realized that she could not stay hidden, she began to tremble and fell to her knees in front of him. The whole crowd heard her explain why she had touched him and that she had been immediately healed. Daughter, he said to her, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. While he was still speaking to her, a messenger arrived from the home of Jairus, the leader of the synagogue. He told him, your daughter is dead. There's no use troubling the teacher now. But when Jesus heard what had happened, he said to Jairus, don't be afraid. Just have faith and she will be healed. Now that when they arrived at the house, Jesus wouldn't let anyone go in with him except Peter, John, James and the little girl's father and mother. The house was filled with people weeping and wailing, but he says, stop the weeping. She isn't dead. She's only asleep. But the crowd laughed at him. How many of us would have laughed? Because they all knew she was dead. Then Jesus took her by the hand and said in a loud voice, my child gets up. And at that moment, her life returned and she immediately stood up. Then Jesus told them to give her something to eat. Her parents were overwhelmed, but Jesus insisted that they not tell anyone what had happened. Lord, we thank you for the reading of your word. Now, I'm going to break this down and we're going to walk through this. First of all, there were two types of daughter, two types of daughter. What did I mean? How many types? It was two types of daughter. Many of us go to this scripture and we only hone in on the woman with the issue of blood. However, there are two daughters in this scripture. It starts by telling us that the 12-year-old, then it shifts to the woman with the issue of blood. Then it comes back to the 12-year-old. But if, as I even get started, I want to say, how many times have you felt like something interrupted the telling of your story and it resulted in a delay to you getting what you were hoping for, praying and seeking God for? Okay, okay, I'm going to keep going. Well, don't fret because even interruptions won't stop God getting us to our final destination. So let's look at these two types of doors. The first one was the woman with the issue of blood. We have this woman who doesn't have, she hasn't, we don't got a name for it. She just, we just know about her issue. She had an issue with her blood. She isn't called daughter until later in the scripture, but I'm calling her daughter here uh, for a reason. She suffered from hemorrhages. One version says for 12 years. We don't know her family status, but whatever it was, she was alone because of her condition. We do know whatever fun she had were all spent on physicians and healers that was resulted in no relief. Imagine bleeding constantly for 12 years. She had to be anemic, she had to be fatigued and losing hope with just each passing year because she waited on her healing, but ain't nothing come. Her strength had to surely been spent. It was gone, right? She is ritually unclean because of her bleeding. Which means for these 12 years, she's been in isolation. Her very existence could have been her watching people avoid her because of her condition. Huh. How many times have you felt like you were, you were watching folks passing you by? How many times have you felt like you were living alone and you were, were left alone to deal with your conditions all by yourself? No touch, no sharing, no friendly gestures. She suffered alone. And it must have felt like no one cared about her bleeding. So surely her, 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 her co uh, living with her had to be rejection and abandonment, right? So there was no one coming on her behalf to Jesus as far as we can see in the scripture. So she, you know what she had to do? She had to gather herself up. She had to must up as enough strength as she could to come for herself. This is my first note to every intercessor on this line. Because to be honest, you hear because you've been called to pray. As an intercessor, sometimes you got to be willing to come for yourself. Okay. Sometimes even as unfair as it is, you have to press through and fight for your breakthrough. 
You got to muster up as much strength as you can and find your way to Jesus. Hallelujah. Then we got Jairus's door. Now here we have this 12 year old who is very sick, yet she isn't alone. I find it significant that she was about 12 years old. This is the age where the boys and the girls, um, somebody mute they, mute they said, um, th this is the age where the boys and girls in the Jewish religion are either bar mitzvah or bar bat mitzvah. And then the culture is significant to them becoming an adult. So we have this 12 year old on the brink of womanhood sick. And then we have one woman who has spent most of her adult life sick. <laughs> we ain't told what made this girl sick, just that her condition is bad and getting worse every moment, right? We don't get a name either, but we do at least have some idea of her connection. We know she's greatly cared for by her father because uh, his very name means God enlightens. So he knew his daughter's condition needed more than he could offer. So he willingly goes out and finds her help. In Mark 5 and 23, it says he pleaded, my little daughter is died, dying, he said. So please come and lay your hands on her and heal her so she may live. In Luke 8, 42 in the A part, it says he stated his only daughter, who was about 12 years old, was dying. So at the beginning of this story, the daughter was just sick. But we find out later she dies. Therefore, she too became unclean because she is dead. Note to the intercessor. Sometimes you have to be a Jairus. The one God enlightens about the needs of his children. And you have to be willing, we have to be willing to carry their concerns to God because they are just too sick to do it for themselves. So what's the lesson in that little piece of scripture? First of all, can I help you today? You are a daughter. Every one of you on here, you're a daughter. If you're a man on here, you're a son. I, can I tell you, you belong to God. So even though neither one of them have a name, we only know them by their condition. But at both times in the, in the telling of this scripture, both of them eventually, you hear them called daughter. But both of these daughters are in need of Jesus. And there's a significance. Why is it significant that you be called daughter? That means your condition, my condition, does not negate the fact that we belong to a father. Come on, somebody. And in this case, you and I have a heavenly father that is concerned about us. That's one of the first things the devil wants to do when we have an issue is to make us believe we are orphans without help or support. I know what I'm talking about. If he can get us to believe his deception, then we will we will we will um, not step up to become the daughter he is destined and assigned us to be. Instead, you know what we do? We forfeit the assignment because of our sickness or our conditions. See, he wants us to stay sick. He wants us to stay in these broken places because then we can't become all that we want to be. He, God wants us to be. So let me talk to you real quick about the significance of the 12. The meaning of 12, which is considered, is a perfect number. Uh, it is also symbolizes God's power and authority, as well as serving as perfect governmental foundation. It also symbolizes completeness. So again, we had one who was 12 and died quickly while the other suffered, suffered through for 12 years. So no matter how long your issue is, God will use it in perfecting you and glorifying himself. Let me say that again. It doesn't matter how long. See, the 12 and the 12, it doesn't matter how long it was. God still got the glory out of it and he perfects you in the process. And I know, wait a minute, hold on. I know y'all like, wait a minute, apostle. Who wants to suffer? Not I, said the chicken. Who, but why can't God, you know, we think, why can't God just stop it? Why can't he heal us now? Why he can't deliver us now? Why he just can't set us free right now? Why, why, why we got to wait? Great question. And I got a great answer for you. He's sovereign. And his ways are just are much higher than ours. And so it won't make sense by our standards. But we do know that in God's plan, it does work out for our good. And we got to hold on to that. So the significance of these two doors is that it shows we need the perfect government, the divine organization, and the apostolic fullness of Christ in our lives. We can't fix our situations. 
But we need to either come ourselves or we need somebody to carry us when we are just totally unable to do so. And so the woman came herself, but the girl's father came for her. And some of us have issues while we were very young that caused something in us to die. And others didn't have their issues until maybe they were older. But both daughters are in need of the master. Daughters, daughters young, daughters old. Whatever you, wherever you are in the, in the equation, God will use all of what we go through to perfect, to perfect who he is calling us to be. Excuse me. So as intercessors, we have access to healing, deliverance, and so much more. The story of these two daughters shows us that two types, they also have two types of access to Jesus, right? The woman had one way to go for her and she went herself. And sometimes we have to be willing to fight for our own answers, our own freedoms and be willing to go ourselves. And other times as intercessors, we have to be like Jairus and be willing to carry those who are too weak, too sick to carry themselves. And we have to be willing to say, I'm going to be who you call me to be. And both requires faith, no matter how you come. So we want to talk to a minute about it's actually two types of waiting. There's two types of waiting. Y'all with me? Y'all with me? Let me hear you in the comments. Are you with me? There's two types of waiting. Okay, thank you. So there are there, thank you. There are two types of waiting. So now as an intercessor, we have to be okay with the P word, y'all. You know I don't like the P word. If anybody know me, know that P word is patient. Because sometimes there are two types of waiting for an answer to our request. The scripture, 2 Corinthians 4, 17 states, for this light momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. You know, that's one of them scriptures. You'd be like, Lord, really, really? That's how you're going to do me, Jesus? You finna tell me what well, don't feel like a light momentary affliction for me. It feel like forever. How many other folks, it feel like forever. Y'all don't even got to raise your hands to tell on yourself. I tell on us for it. It be feeling like it don't, it don't matter if it was two days, two years, one day, two hours. We be like, Lord, everybody, right? And so yet God is saying, but in his scheme of understanding all that he has for us and the eternal uh, uh, um, destination we have, he said, that's a little drop. So don't even get bogged down in the little drop because what's coming is really beyond all comparison. But let me now tell you for a moment about these two kind of weights. First of all, there's the long wait, the long wait, the long wait, the long wait. See, in the long wait, the woman with the issue was being, uh, well, it was her waiting was killing her slowly. It was a long process. She waited these 12 years for an answer because of the constant bleeding. She had to have been weak. She must have been in some type of pain. She had no sisters that she could call on to hold her up. She was unable to have human touch because of the Levitical law requiring her to keep herself separate due to her bleeding. She tried every traditional means to get well. Scripture says she spent all her money and, and on physicians, but she got no better. How many of us, let me put a pause right there. How many of us, you run from one church to another, from one healing service to another, from this to that, and and, and all they did was taking your money. If you give me this $1,000, I'm going to make sure and guarantee you're going to get a healing. And you gave them your 1000 your money spent, and you still in the same place you are. Okay, I'm going to keep it moving. However, the answer she needed is now available. She has waited for the answer, and the answer is Jesus. But then there's also a short but deadly way. I don't, to be honest, I don't know which one is worth, but there's a short but deadly way. Jesus came for his daughter, but he had to wait for others to be healed first. He had to wait for Jesus to deal with the crowd around him. In the waiting, he had to wait for, for him to heal this, this woman. But in the waiting, news get back to him and say, oh, it's just too late. Don't even worry about it. Leave, leave the teacher alone. Can I ask you a question? How many times have you been waiting only to get you right there? I mean, he right there. He talking, having conversation with Jesus. He right there. How many times have you been right there? And then it's still you know, the news you that came back is it's too late. It's not going to change. You, you, you missed your moment. 
Maybe you might have thought if only God had come immediately, maybe if he'd have dealt with my situation and hadn't made me wait for this crowd and this woman, she had, she had dealt with it for 12 years. She could wait a moment longer. You know, we could have got selfish, right? Instead, and, and thinking instead of making me wait, my thing would have got better. Well, the lesson for us is, and the question is, have you had to wait 12 years for an answer or whatever the time was? But you realize that however long you waited on your answer, it's the time that God is only allowed to complete a thing for you. Mm -hmm. Did you try to fix it yourself? Not even realizing that Jesus' ministry was available to you, like the woman with the issue of blood. You tried all your own means. You tried your own situation. You, you, you used your money, your time, your energy. You did everything you can, but you found yourself still stuck and unable to get what you need. You couldn't get, your issue was killing you and you didn't realize that you had an answer right in front of you. Huh. You watched yourself turn desperate like Jairus' father. You, you, you watched your, your situation turn desperate and, and you could even lose hope. Waiting on the answer to come for your situation can either cause us to give up, become better, or to fight for what we need. You know, people, we, we say stuff like, oh, ain't nobody going to do me this way no more. That ain't going to happen to me because we finally say, forget it. I ain't waiting on nobody else. I'm doing this myself. Or the question is, what died in you at 12 years of age? Here you were on the brink of moving from childhood to womanhood and something stepped in and made you sick. What if 12 made you so sick that life began to leave you? Maybe it wasn't 12 for you. Maybe it was five. Maybe it was 10. Maybe it was 13, 15. But what in your early childhood stepped in and tried to take your very life from you? Or what issue caused your soul to bleed for 12 years? Both Jairus and the woman with the issue of blood, though, they didn't give up. And as a result, their faith was answered. Intercessors, no matter the situation, I come to tell you, you bet not give up. We can't give up. Cry if you have to. Yell if you have to. But don't you, don't you, don't you, don't you, don't you dare give up because God has an answer for you. And it comes in two types of touch. Come on. Come on, somebody. There are two types of touch. <laughs> Intercessors. Let me tell you something. All oh, this feel good. See, the scripture shows that there are two types of daughters, right? Both showing different stages of need. There was two types of waiting. Sometimes you're waiting a long time and, so, and, and find yourself weak from, from expecting or waiting that, that, that is so long. You're just like, I, I don't even know if I can keep going or it's devastating you as you wait. But, but, but sometimes the wait wasn't long, but it was enough that it just about took you out. But both daughters needed a specific touch. So let's look at this touch. First touch is touch him. Touch him. Ha. The woman with the issue kneeled to touch Jesus' garment. He didn't touch her. She touched him. Remember, she must have lived this isolated life for these, this time. She may not even felt worthy for him to touch her. But she had the faith. She said, if I could just touch you. If I just touch him, if he, if I touch him, something in him is going to touch me. Come on, somebody. Have you tried to touch Jesus with your prayers, with your worship, with your admiration? You may not have even felt worthy enough to ask him to touch you. Uh-huh. But this is the thing. But you had the faith that if you could just reach out and touch him, your condition was going to be healed. Yep, that's where your faith come in. Mark 5, 27, 28 said she had heard about Jesus. She heard about him. So she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his robe. For she thought to herself, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. So you know what? She just said, I'm not letting anything stand in the way of me getting what I need. I don't care how long you've been waiting. I don't care how weak and tired you are. So you better not let nothing stop you from reaching down and touching the hem. Because when you touch the hem, you're touching the word. Okay, I'm going to get to that later. He touches you. That's the next one. He touches you. 
Jesus went to Jairus' daughter. We read the scripture. See, she was unable to reach out to him. She had died. Her condition left her dead, unresponsive, unresponsive. She was not able to make any decisions. In fact, she did not, she wasn't even aware that she had a need. And so what did he do? He reached out and touched her so that then she was able to rise. You know, there are times in our lives when we must willingly reach out to the Lord through our humble acts of prayer, worship, meditation, devotion to the word. And when we do, we can touch the hem and receive what we desire. There are other times when our condition has been so bound, we can't reach out. We don't even know how to reach out. We don't even have an answer. We're not even aware we need to reach out. But Jesus, in his great love for us, reaches down, come on somebody, and pulls up, this young girl was on this bed, she was dead. He reached down upon this bed and pulled her up. God enlightens us to our needs so then he can provide what we need. That's right. So Daniel 9, 18 says, oh my God, lean, oh my God, lean down and listen to me. Open your eyes and see our despair. See how your city, the city that bears your name, lies in ruin. We make this plea not because we deserve help, but because of your mercy. Sometimes we got to say, Lord, just lean down and pick me up. Just lean down because I'm not able to rise myself. I can't get up. God, I need you to help. So I want to explain something about reaching the hymn before I go on to the scripture that I want to do. So the hem requires you to go low because my hem is at the bottom. It's the, the hem of your pants is at the bottom. So we're talking about what was at the bottom. That means you got to humble yourself. Uh, sometimes we can't get a healing and a deliverance because we're too prideful and we won't humble ourselves. So if you have a press shawl, you know, you see the tassel, the fringes on the tallit, right? Um, and what happens is the... Um, the, the tassels are called teeth seats, the little tassels. And so they originally were like a four corner outer garment with the fringes, the teeth seats attached to them. And so the wearing of the tallit has its basis in the Old Testament scripture. The word itself is not found in the Bible. However, the teeth seats is. So I'm going to read Numbers 15, 37 through 40. Amen. You can go let her read. So then the Lord said to Moses, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. Throughout the generations to come, you must make tassels for the hem of your clothes and attach them with blue cord. When you see the tassels, you will remember and obey all the commands of the Lord instead of following your own desires and defiling yourself as you are prone to do. The tassels will help you remember that you must obey all my commandments to be holy to your God. So the real significance of the tallit is not the garment itself, but the fringes. The tassels of fringes was to remind Israel of God's commandments of his word. So the fringe on Jim and Jesus's garment was to remind her, or was a reminder of the word. The woman did not come to Jesus and pat him on the back in a familiar way, but she lowered herself to the tassel. She didn't treat him common, but through humility, she reached for the fullness of him and touched the word. Come on, somebody. Too many of us are reaching for pieces of Jesus or treating who he is and what he has to offer too common. We want Jesus to save you, but that's a little S. Or Jesus to heal it with a little H. Jesus to deliver with a little D. Or Jesus to fix it. Or the Jesus to stuff giver. But do we want the fullness of Jesus, all of Jesus? And I believe when that woman went up, she said, I need everything that he got. I need what he got. So she said, I'm going to touch the word. In flesh, because in Jesus was the word made flesh. She said, I'm going, I'm going to humble myself because I need the fullest of Jesus. And she needed the word. She needed Jesus, the word. You and I, we need Jesus, the word. When we reach for the word, we reach out to grasp what he will, what will help us live beyond ourselves, beyond our lack, beyond our selfishness. It's not until we come desperate for him that we desire to reach out to the word that then we able to get what we said. It's a quote by a, a fourth century Christian father named Jerome. And he said, ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ. Let me say that again. Ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ. See, 
we have to know and learn and come to a place of realizing who he is and what we need from him. We need to humble ourselves to reach the word because is that not what Jairus did? He humbled himself. Even the colors of uh, the, 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 like the, the, um, the press shawls, even the color was significant. The colors were significance of royalty. It was significance of your position and your place. And so what is symbolic and, and we should understand is that when we go, uh -huh, when we go to touch the hymn, we know that then we're not just touching. Remember, I go back to we talking about being daughters. As his children, when we touch his hymn, we're touching by way of our position in him and that therefore you and I can get everything that we need from him. First Peter 2 and I said, but if you are not like that, for you are a chosen people, you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. So when the woman reached out to the hem of Christ, she also reached out and found her chosen place as his people. She was not only receiving healing, she was receiving sonship. Come on, somebody. Don't you know sometimes that's what keeps us from being whole? We have not grabbed hold of the most significant part of the healing, which is sonship. I'm a daughter of God. You're a daughter of God. And he told him, he told her to go in peace. He released God's shalom. And the Hebrew meaning of peace is harmony, wholeness, completeness, prosperity, welfare, tranquility. And it can be used like this. I love it. it can be used as hello and goodbye. Come on, somebody. Let me tell you what the Lord told me about that one was good. Don't you know when you come before the Lord and get your healing, he in a sense says, you saying hello to all the things that he had for you and bye bye to everything that the enemy has tried to do against you. You saying hello to my peace. You saying hello to his joy. You saying hello to his provision. You saying bye bye to abandonment. Bye bye to rejection. You saying hello and goodbye at the same time come on somebody and so there's no way that when she reached out to touch the hem of his garment there was that she had an interaction with the word she touched the word and so you and I when we have a need we need to be able to touch the word your faith reaching out to the Lord is so that you can touch the word and then the word can touch you so we have to ask ourselves what needs to change in my life today and even though I've taught this lesson a few times, it was different this time. For God was doing some healing in me. And so as I was writing, I kept hearing, daughter, you were both. <laughs> I was the issue. I was the girl. And I was the woman with the issue of blood. Things happened to me that made the little girl in me sick. And then things got worse. And I was, as I was on the verge of turning 12. And instead of walking into womanhood, I was dying from the sickness spread to me by others. And to add to it, even though I let her get saved, love the Lord, I was walking around for years hemorrhaging. I was trying at best I could to find help. I didn't know anything about deliverance. I didn't know nothing about God healing. That wasn't what we were taught. So I tried to no avail, but I was only getting sicker and sicker. But when I was willing to not worry about what someone else was thinking, <laughs> when I was willing to fight with all my strength, when I was willing to say, Lord, I need to be healed and I don't care if I don't care what nobody say, they can think something wrong with me. I don't even care. It don't matter. What you think don't matter. I need my healing and I need it now. And you know what I got? I got my healing. I got my breakthrough. I got my joy back. Woo. I got healed. God healed the little girl in me so the woman in me could stand up right. No more being bent over because I imagine this woman had to be bent over. There's no way you can't be hemorrhaging and all of that and you standing up right. Uh -huh, but see, I'm not hemorrhaging no more. And God said he don't want y'all hemorrhaging no more. He wants you standing up right before him because he want to deal with your sickness. And tonight, I'm going to pray a prayer for God to heal the wounds and whatever has held you back from being who he says you fully are. And after I finish, after, after, after I finish for those that came in later, I'm going to cut off the recording. If you would like prayer, 
This is a no judgment zone. If you would like prayer, you just stay on. If those that don't want prayer, you can leave after I finish the prayer. And then what we're going to do, we're going to send you into the, uh, we're going to put you into the breakout room. So I'm getting ready to pray. You can actually um, just uh, stop sharing the screen. We thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name, in the matchless, wonderful name of Jesus Christ, I come to you right now, God, and I say thank you. I thank you that you are Father. I thank you that you are the Father that loves us, God. I thank you today to know that healing is ours. And so we come as the intercessor. Sometimes, God, we give us the strength to know that we need to pray for ourselves. So we're going to pray today, God, that you give us the strength to never give up. Help us to have an attitude that we're going to do and be all that you have called for us to be. We're not going to let whatever our condition is weigh us down so heavy that we don't know how to get back up. And we're not getting back up in our strength. We're getting back up because of the strength that you have given unto us. It might be a little strength, but I thank you for the little strength. And then if you give me a little bit more strength, Father, I get a little bit stronger. So God, today, I thank you for every daughter, everyone listening, that Father, maybe they've been going through some issues for a long time and they felt like giving up it didn't feel right it didn't feel fair they didn't know how they was gonna make it they didn't have nobody it felt like nobody was in their corner they felt like they've been carrying this weight all the time all by themselves but i come to tell you what i know that's true by way of the holy ghost god never leaves us nor does he forsake us he promised that that's a promise and one thing he is not he is not a liar he is the man that he, he's not like man that he should lie. So he's been there all the time. In fact, he said there was times when you couldn't walk and he carried you. Father, thank you for Pierre about Sunday. Thank you for picking us up when we didn't have the strength to stand on our own. And God, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus for being able to uh to know that we can trust you, that you are Abba, you are Father, you the God that sees us. You see and know every condition and situation. You know where we've got lack. You know where we've got hurt. You know where we've been discouraged. You know where we've been dishonored. You know, you know, you know it all. And God, I thank you today in the name of Jesus for releasing your healing over your daughters, over your sons, over your children now in the name of Jesus. Father, and I thank you for those that still carrying the weight of the little girl still carrying the burden of the little girl, still carrying that weight from things, from rejection, from things that were not done properly for people not treating them right. But that little boy, that little girl that you were not loved the way you should have, that you were ignored and overlooked and left to raise yourself. And, 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 and something opened up, the enemy opened up a door and sickness got in. Father, we thank you for going back to those places right now in the name of Jesus and healing every wound. There's not a wound that I declare will be left open. I declare God by your spirit, you, you're healing and sealing every wound. Not that the sickness be left in, but after you clean it out in the name of Jesus. Ah, just like Jesus reached down and touched that young girl and he said, rise up, I speak to you. Rise up out of your sick bed. Rise up out of your condition. Rise up out of the places and spaces where the enemy has tried to make you lay on your bed of affliction. Rise up in the name of Jesus and not only walk, ah, but in the scripture, he told them to feed the little girl. Ah, so guess what? Ah, get up and eat. What are you going to get up and eat? Get up and eat the word. Eh, yeah, they, they, they will. So get up and feast yourself on the word so that you can have strength. Feast yourself on the presence of God. Feast yourself on the things of God so that you have the ability to stand and run. Feast yourself on the what God has for you. So God says today, I am going to do a new thing in you. All you got to do is come humbly before me with an expectancy. And when you come humbly with an expectancy, uh, you're going to receive. Today, God, I thank you that we receive from you. We receive the blessings. We receive the breakthroughs. We receive the answers. Oh, God, I thank you for reminding us that we are not alone. And because we are not alone, we are in the presence of the Most High. And we don't come like paupers. Uh, he calls and summons us. He says, come to me, daughter. 
Come to me, son. I come to me. When you come to me, I'm going to lean down and pick you up. I'm going to lean down and catch you up. I, not because you deserve it, but because my great love and great mercy be released unto you. Father, I ask now that you release your fire. Release your fire over your people now in the name of Jesus. I, oh, God, thank you. Just start burning off stuff. Whoo. Thank you, Father. Just stop burning off stuff. Things that had us in bondage. Things that make us think we're not important. Things that make us feel like we don't belong. Whatever it is, God, right now in the name of Jesus, we say thank you. Oh, blow a fresh blow a fresh wind upon us. Help us to walk in, in who we are, in our sonship. Because uh, that's what happens when you reach the Him. Uh, it was like a double dose of the word. Because here we had Jesus, the word made flesh, and then he had on tassel on the bottom of his garment, which was the was representative of the word. You touch the word and the word touch you. God, thank you for the double portion of what you are pouring out to us now in the name of Jesus. So, Father, I ask you to seal this prayer. I ask you to uh, help us to even, even as we go from this place, keep ministering to us, keep talking to us, help us to hear and receive what it is that you have for us. Because Father, we desire to have it all. We desire to have everything you want for us. We desire to walk in purpose and identity like we have never done before. So God, we just give you the praise now in Jesus name. Amen and amen. All right, we're going to stop the recording. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.